How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode number nine of the Liam Jones Fine Art Show webcast, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's a few things to talk about here before I get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about portraiture, and I'm going to be going over some stuff from some masters, basically just talking about craft. Um, so I don't like talking about craft and doing how-to videos. I know that's kind of a staple of YouTube, and it's a staple for artist videos, but I really like talking about ideas and about um, you know principles concepts archetypes uh, the fundamentals of, of thought and communication why people look at artwork in the first place not because it's beautiful but because it it means something to them that's what I like about art that's what draws me to it that's what draws you to it whether you like it or not um, I mean it's what it's it may not be what catches you initially because along with craft there's also marketing. Um, so craft and marketing are the glitz and the glamour of the whole thing, but the substance that actually connects with you, draws you in, and, and keeps you there is substance. Um, and that's the human condition, that's thought, that's having read books, that's having traveled, that's have, um, you know, living a life that's worth living, and then communicating that. I mean, that's what people, that's, that's what draws people generally, right? Um, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong, I, you know, but, but that's why I'm here. That's what brings me to do videos on YouTube is because I think that ideas are key, they're paramount, and they divide people. Um, it's controversial because ideas are, you know, subjective and people will disagree about them because once you connect with people, you're also going to have enemies. Um, and that's normal. And be, to be honest, like I'm girded, I'm ready. It's going to come because I am a conservative Christian and those things are people hate it. And, you know, I don't mean to be controversial or hated, um, but it's, I know what's going to happen, um, especially if I keep doing this. You know, people are going to, you know, say that I'm bigoted and homophobic and all this kind of stuff. And, and I'm not. And it's that's wrong. But um, I'm just going to continue doing this and being myself because I love it. Um, and because I think that I'm helping to make the world a better place and that's why I'm here. So today we're going to talk about portraiture and uh, I'm going to move over to this amazing, amazing website that you may or may not be aware of called Google Arts and Culture. <sighs> what an intro, hey? All right, so let's see. I'm going to move over here. Google Arts and Culture. <laughs> This is the man here, Rembrandt Van Rijn. So Google Arts and Culture started off as the Google Arts Project many years ago with this really high-tech, super amazing scanner. They started scanning classic artworks, both on paper and canvas and whatnot, in amazingly high resolution. Just stunning images that you could go right up close, like watch this. Now, if you try to look at a painting this close in a gallery, you're going to get kicked out but you can do it here. You can see the cracks. It's like you need to look at a painting with a microscope from a distance, you know, like a telephoto lens to get this kind of detail. Um, and they generally don't like that in galleries either. So this is a real privilege to be able to look at a masterwork like this so close up, like boom. So aside from Aside from talking about Google Art Project, this is Rembrandt, Rembrandt Van Rijn's self-portrait. It's my personal favorite of his that he's done. So I'm going to go right for the good stuff here. I'm not going to beat around the bush. This is this is the Shazna right here. This is amazing. So Rembrandt uses all kinds of amazing devices. He is a master for you know for for good reason. There's so much to talk about here, but I'm going to try to keep it to a, uh, a minimum because I want to get through a lot today and I don't want to make this show too long. Color scheme. This is based, based off of a complementary color scheme, which is the way the human eye works. The human eye works in terms of complements. We see things uh, in, in opposites. For instance, if you look at a really bright color with your eye and you let it burn into your retina for a little bit, you look at it for like 10, 15, 20 seconds, right? Around that 
thing that you're looking at with that bright color, you're going to see a shimmer. And that's the opposite color. Your mind and your eye are working in tandem to produce the opposite color for some reason. There's all these different reasons, you know, ideas why. And uh, I, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know why. But I know that your eye produces it because I've experimented with it many, many, <laughs> many, many hours growing up, like staring at things like a freak and then looking at something else. So you look at like something that's red and then you you close your eyes and then you look at a white piece of paper and then you're going to see green um, in the in the same shape as that red thing and we all know this you know it's just a fascinating thing that the eye does but in terms of painting painting to get this kind of beautiful effect you use opposites you use complementary color schemes so this is actually not in your face complementary color scheme it's not obvious that it's using it and it's it's arguable in fact that he even was using a complementary color scheme but i'm going to say that he is and that is because the predominant color that draws you is the nose here in the cheeks this use of of pink which is actually red and then in the shadows he's used uh, believe it or not this starts to register as green even though it's brown and brown is orange so technically he should be using blue on highlights but he's not he's using red so you look at the highlights you see that the main color here is red there's also some yellow but you don't see any purple in this painting so the highlight is red and then the uh, the shadows on the face and in the hair and in the background register as green see this beautiful color here in the eyes the ambient color it looks gray but that's actually that's actually green you could also see it could register as purple as well because of the yellow around it um, because it's not obvious what color he's using but this is basically green and red and then he's playing off of the uh, yellow throughout of here as well also of note when you look at Rembrandt the first thing you notice is this beautiful use of texture which was revolutionary at the time he uses impasto style paintings and then he lets it dry and then he uses transparencies over top and him and Vermeer Jan van Eyck were the guys that were known for doing this on just the next level just beautiful beautiful mastery my goodness I had this for a screensaver for like half a year maybe a full year I looked at it every day and one of my favorite parts to look at aside from the eye is this right here I love it look at this 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 like beautiful pink red here some yellow and then this little swish of brown right here for the mustache and then this also swish on the nose to draw you to draw the eye to draw the eye so the first thing that you look at when you look at this painting of course is the eye and the nose you're, you're drawn towards both of them and the nose comes forward because of the use of the contrast so that's pulling and then pushing and then this eye here is pushed further back even more so let's look at the two eyes the two eyes have a have a device used here to um, to both add visual interest and to direct where your eye looks and to, to move your eye around the painting which is really kind of like Jedi level um, mastery level of painting like when you're finishing up a painting if you know what you're doing the final third of your process is going to be geared towards directing people's eye you've worked out the composition in the beginning you've started doing things and then as you're finishing it up you're like okay how is this actually going to make someone feel when they look at it how is it, how are we going to direct their gaze so this eye here comes forward because of this highlight this highlight and um and the, the contrast that that creates and then this here is pushed back because of the lack of contrast so this pushing and pulling is is key to portraiture it's probably i mean it's it's really important among among some of the most important things in in the craft of portraiture beautiful stuff so taking that to a more extreme example is this here this is my favorite guy Ah, yes, Van Gogh. So this is a more obscure self-portrait. Um, just so it's green and red color scheme. Green being the ambient color in the background. That ambient color is reflected off of his eye. From a distance, it looks amazing. It looks normal. And then you zoom in and you're like, what, is he blind in that eye? No, he's just a master. He's just a freaking master using his freaking mastery. So in, in this eye here, He's used that, which really ought to 
it, it ought to <laughs> work. It, it ought to work as like, as, as a lower contrast. You should be looking at this eye first. And in fact, that is what happens. You end up looking at this eye first, but just because it's so strange that he's done that, you, you marvel at the craft of it. It's a really strange portrait, the way he, the way he messed with, with your expectations of what a portrait is. I mean, aside from the raw brush strokes and stuff, this is absolute genius level painting here. This, this, you can't just do this. This is incredible that he pulled this off because, because of that. So this is an, uh, the eye that's in shadow. And this is, this is for some reason, what you should be drawn to in terms of, of the technicals of the painting. But instead this eye draws you first, even though it's got less contrast, which is really strange. Um, but if you break it down, he's used red here, a kind of strong red, not as dark as this, but very vivid and strong. And then this here has the green um, with a little bit of yellow thrown in there as well. And um, that's because of the vivid color there that contrasts against the ambient, the ambience of the rest of the painting. This here, he's used a darker red, uh, and this is just brilliant. If you ever use a, if you ever feel gutsy enough to do a portrait and use some strong color, try using red in the shadows. Um, if if your painting is predominantly uh, um, green, and if your painting is predominantly uh, blue, use really strong orange in the shadows and see what happens. You know. Um, it, it does the same thing. When, when your eye sees things in terms of opposites, you can have a lot of fun with color when you kind of get a handle on how to use those opposites. So beautiful painting by the man Van Gogh. One more I want to talk about here is Mary Cassatt. And this one here, my friend put me onto this. Um, he's a big fan of Cassatt. And I haven't really got into her work too much, but this painting here just grabs me. And I'm sure it grabs you too. And this is just a brilliant use of blue and orange color scheme. Now you don't actually see any orange here. What you see is this beautiful peachy color. Well, there's some orange. And in fact, well, let's talk about that. Um, so when you look at this painting from a distance, excuse me, First thing that gets you is this crazy design. It's a beautiful design, triangular. And your eye is drawn first to this face right here. And that's because of this really strong use of color on the chin. Aside from the fact that the rest of the color on his face is a beautiful, warm, peachy orange color. Um, this contrast right here catches your eye and that that's what you get first. And then from there, his gaze moves you over here, but she didn't even need to do the gaze because the next thing your eye would look at would be this contrast here where he's used this kind of a little bit. So this is orangey. This is red. So he's moved a little bit from the complementary to more of a um, an analogous color scheme. Red would be kind of closer to purple. Um, and it, so it's not as it's not as eye catchy. And because it's also not surrounded by any other bright colors, it, the this use of red and the the peach they're analogous they don't catch your eye as much so he's she's used contrast in a really really sophisticated mature way to direct your eye in terms of importance high contrast high importance lower contrast less importance and so you'll you'll go one two three and then down here to the hand and the hand you see there's some purple going on in here and purple, of course, is another analogous. It's even closer to blue than red is. And so that's the third thing that your eye looks at. And then you start to explore the rest of the painting. You might get lost to here a little bit. You might go down to the legs and then back up again and then just kind of start soaking the whole painting in in your brain as it should be because it's a beautiful masterwork. My goodness, she is great. Okay, so that's my little art history talk. Now, hey. Uh, now we're going to get into my artwork. So let's do that, shall we? Yes, yes, we shall. Actually, no, we shall not because this video is going to take forever to upload. So stay tuned for the next show where I actually get into my own portrait that I've been working on for the past week. It's going to be fun. See you then. Bye now.